Okay then, time for us to beat the Mendacious Visage. I'm not going to put the full fight of this one in because it was like 10 minutes. We're starting against Garrus right now though because and what I'm going to do is advise you bring in at least 10 healing stones. Maybe even a little bit more. Mostly because this game, this boss is extremely long. And if you get towards the end of the boss fight and you're like just on that last little bit of health, you are going to be infuriated when you have to restart this. So just make sure you bring enough healing in. Obviously, if you're a Radiance build, this just will not be an issue for you. But with that prep said, let's go ahead and get on into the boss fight. And so what works for me is to start with get into the boss. Obviously, you have to start in the Umbral mode for this. I'm assuming if you're searching this video, you already know actually how to get into the boss. If you want a full walkthrough, so that's coming later. Anyways, I'm going to advise what works for me is to open up the umbral flower that's in here. There are two nodes that you need to get broken. Obviously, it'll be up on the video. It's like kind of one to your left and one to your right just going in. But please, it's fine. That's going to open up the back end of the area. Make sure you rush around and get all of the enemies dealt with. And if you do this better and faster than me, you can actually then go ahead and use the enemies to recover your wither. This is actually easier on the second time around. because That's actually what I did during the streams. This was a first time attempt, so we kind of didn't have that ability after the uh, visage came and hit me. Realistically speaking, it's probably easiest if you loop around to the far ones that are on the ledge before getting the one near the platform or stairs that you climb to get up there. That's because, realistically, we're trying to ignore him to start with. We want to just clear the arena out, make sure we've got lots of space. It's not terribly difficult to avoid its attacks in general. Like, if you just want to wait around and stay out of its range, that's not, that's not difficult. What is an issue is seems to have fairly short wind-ups so when you go in for damage particularly in melee it's very often that it can like jump and create this rather huge aoe around it which is really easy at catching you and even when you iframe through it with a dodge it still seems to take your wither health off so just be really careful about getting close to it but from here then what i'm going to advise is that you just take it slow like i said this is unfortunately just a long boss battle circle around it when it does the charge make sure you're sprinting and then as it gets like kind of close-ish you will need to actually dodge it does have like insane tracking for sprint which just seems unusual most sprint enemies usually don't lock on quite that well so this enemy just outright has some some abilities that are just kind of annoying the other thing that's also really annoying and i probably didn't do it in the video because i was kind of just messing around as i was doing it are the slugs now if you try and keep it in the main Kind of fighting area get it to drop its slugs down there and if it does this just go up to the upper platform the idea is just to wait them out they'll disappear eventually and then you won't have to have them splashing all over you they'll take all of you with the damage off and they can inflict frostbite which basically halves the amount of stamina you have which is just a pain in the ass something else that's useful to note although it's not as useful as you would want it to be i don't think is there are quite a lot of pustules in here so when the mendacious visage decides to open the front of its face, you can go ahead and soul pull it, and that'll put it into a repostable state. So you can probably get like five or six of them, but it really doesn't do the amount of damage that you would want it to do. I, I, when I saw that we had that, I, mean, I was like, oh, that's what they want us to do. And then it probably takes maybe 20% of its health off. So it just does not do the amount of damage that maybe you would want it to do. With that said then, uh, best times to attack are when it's trying to do its front slam. If you can get behind it, that's good. that's a pretty good one. If you are already behind it, when it starts firing its slugs out, usually you can get some damage in for there. But you do need to be careful because sometimes it can just fire them backwards. A bit weird, but it can. And when it does its charge at you, and then you can get it to go into the wall, you can usually get two swings on that and then back on out. This is a long, long fight. I think it's got the most health out of any boss I've faced in the game so far. It just seems to take forever to, to put it down. If you guys have found anything else that you think is helpful, please put it down in the comments because I'm sure somebody is going to find it helpful. And basically, the reason we bought all those healing stones is because, like I said, it's very easy to disengage. So if you end up on low health, there's absolutely no reason you can't back off a little bit. Pop one, wait for it to actually heal you. Maybe pop a second one, wait for that to heal you and then go back in and continue the fight. Hope this helps you out, and I'll see you all in the next video.